I wake up to the sound of blue wrens chirping in the undergrowth, take forever to pack, and then back on the road, taking it slow as I've seen many wallabies on the way in. And sure enough, while admiring the size of a wind turbine, a dopey little wallaby totters across my path. Woo, time to pay attention. I get into Portland and pull up by the foreshore for breakfast. I drop into a bookshop offering two-for-one Western novels. I met a guy called Frank, who told me that in 76 he rode a Melbourne Star bike from Portland to Perth, starting with 45 kilos. He said that by the time he was halfway through the trip, he ditched half that gear. I knew what he was getting at. I had way too much gear, and it was playing on my mind. I head for a local museum and learn a little about the history of Portland. It was the first permanent settlement in Victoria in 1834. The Henties, a rich farming and banking family from West Towering, Sussex, sailed their catch the thistle from Tasmania after Edward Henty discovered rich soil on a prior trip. They weren't the first to settle the area, but they were the first with money. A fellow by the name of Dutton had been visiting the region since 1828, seasonally hunting whales. He had an Aboriginal girlfriend, which was apparently frowned upon by the establishment. I visited Edward Henty's 1855 mansion. It had seen better days. On this trip I plan on using local libraries as my office, stopping in to send off emails and do my writing. I stopped in at the well-equipped Portland Library, which even had a coffee machine. I parked the doctor under a walkway and covered it with my $6 security tarp. As I was preparing to leave after a few hours' work, a young bearded fellow approached me asking about my bike. Edward was French-Canadian. He too wanted to ride a motorcycle long distance. His father had passed away and he wished to ride in his memory on a BMW, his father's choice of bike. But he appeared interested in my bike and particularly its economic price. The Suzuki DR650 is a poor man's adventure bike. $9,000 new, or as in my case, four and a half thousand second hand with only three and a half thousand on the clock. I've since spent roughly three and a half thousand more on the bike, getting it ready for anything. We waved goodbye and I headed to the local supermarket to get some dinner. I later saw Edward again while heading out of town. He waved me in and asked me if I wanted to stay the night in their spare bed. I took up the offer and enjoyed the first shower of the trip. Edward shared a house with Bo, an older gentleman who also had a penchant for bikes and BMWs. One of the great joys of travelling are these chance encounters, these moments of trust and abandon, where strangers become friends and everyone is richer for the experience.